We are trying to understand why aging is associated with disease. The idea is to get away from individual disease-related research, but more take the unifying view on the common root of age-related diseases as the aging process itself. And together, we're tackling the big questions of how we can solve the problem of aging-associated diseases. This research center brings together researchers from the biology department with clinical scientists from the University Hospital in Cologne. We've transformed our campus into an epicenter of aging research. To keep the spirit of collaboration, but also to keep the spirit of we can do this. Together we can actually create something that is more than just the individual sum of things. On many, many different levels that Secret has developed. And so we invested a lot into increasing the critical mass, recruiting top scientists internationally at different levels, from junior researchers to established professors, to really bring together all the expertise to generate the framework for those scientists to communicate, to interact, to collaborate, to pursue new ideas. The international dimension of the CCAT is really exemplary. Uh, it attracts people from all over the world. You can learn from each other in terms of culture, in terms of ways which we approach problems. And that, I think, also gives added value to the Institute. Next to getting extremely good new colleagues, for me one of the major advantages of having CCAT here is that it has completely changed the infrastructure. And with the establishment of these facilities, imaging, proteomics, lipidomics, I think that really has changed the landscape and what you can do and how you can pursue your research. Model organisms play an enormously important role in understanding the biology of aging. And here we're uniquely positioned in our diversity of model organisms that we are using. The nematode worm, the fruit fly, the fish, the naked mole rat and mice are being used to understand the entire complexity of the aging process to then being able to translate our results to the benefits of humans to treat and prevent aging associated diseases. The major changes over the next 10 years will be that we are getting much, much more of a detailed mechanistic understanding how aging is really regulated. So that's more from the very basic science point of view. But we're also beginning to translate the first of those new understandings into clinical practice. We've taken such a dynamic development over the last, let's say, 20 years that we will be positioned to continue this successful track to cutting-edge research, understanding new fundamental principles, not only in aging, but in age-related diseases in general. <laughs>